Now today we're looking at the throttle position sensor which on many modern vehicles is built into the throttle body. I'll show you two techniques on how to test this sensor. One is with a scan tool, very very easy, very very fast. Number two is an old fashioned way without the scan tool. So we'll go over both techniques and if you've been following along this will most likely be the last sensor video before the top is done on the S2000 behind me so I will follow up with that within a few days but that being said let's begin now the first technique is simply using a scan tool and if you've been following along you know that I'll have a link in the description box below for this scan tool this is probably one of the cheapest ones I've come across it's forty dollars off Amazon and you can do a number of really really uh, a number of tests with the scan tool super super simple to use and you just have to find your port which on the early S2000s is on the passenger side. Okay. So the scan tool is plugged in. You just need to turn on the ignition key. No need to start the car, just turn on the key. Okay. So the key thing here is to have a scan tool that's able to read data stream. Okay. And again, this is one of the cheaper scan tools I've come across. Perfect if you're really just your own mechanic uh, and you just want to essentially just keep your car running very easy to use and you can do a lot of a lot of nice things with the scan tool but what you want to do is you scroll through the menu until you find the throttle position sensor okay we click that and you should see a value so we have 5.5 percent don't worry about the percentage the key thing here is I'm going to press down the accelerator as I press down the accelerator this value should change. So let me see if I can get this all in one shot here for us. A little hard to do with the glare. But uh, here we go. I'll give it a shot from here. Do you see how that value changes? And that's what you want to see, okay? Now if you don't see this change, then you have a problem with the sensor or even maybe a wiring problem. So let's check that out. Now what we can do is test the sensor. Very, very easy to do. And I'll show you how you can sort of figure out how to do this. So right here is the throttle position sensor. It lives on the throttle body. And there's a harness connector at the 9 o'clock position. Okay, so right here is a tab. I should say a tab, I meant at 9 o'clock. So you press down, press down on the tab and you pull from the body. Don't pull from the wires. And on the inside you'll find these small, small terminals. Okay, you see them? Now what we need to do is get a reading from these terminals. And I'll give you a different screenshot to show you exactly what we're doing. But to do this, you need a digital multimeter. Many of you have these. If you do not, this one is $20 off Amazon. Super easy to do, or use, I should say. But right here, what we need to do is a resistance or an ohms test. And that's the omega symbol on the multimeter. So let me set this up and show you how you can do this. Now every multimeter has two leads, a red lead and a black lead. And then I'm just using two wires that, that have alligator ends. Okay, it's not necessary, it just makes the job super, super easy. Again, I think it cost me five or six bucks off Amazon for like a 10 pack. And I'll have links if you guys need help finding those things. So what I'm going to do is take these clips, touch the sensor, and they will go directly to the multimeter. And I'll give you a very, very good screenshot. So let me show you. Now you may be thinking, how do I know which prongs to touch? Well, process of elimination, and I'll show you what I mean. Now in my case, I'm taking the first lead and touching the prong all the way up top. Okay? And as you can see from this picture I'm circling the two leads that I'm touching in this case your vehicle may be a little bit different but again process of elimination and I'll do that for you by the way I'm going to try different prongs and you'll see the difference on the multimeter and then looking at the multimeter again we want the ohms setting and then just simply take the alligator clip we take one end Touch it to the red lead. The other one will go to the black lead and you should see a reading. 
Okay, so we have roughly 5.6 kilo ohms. Now watch, watch as I change the throttle. Now in my case, I have a physical or mechanical hookup from the throttle body to the pedal. If your vehicle is more modern, you may have a throttle by wire system. In other words, you don't have a throttle cable. If that's the case, just have someone sit in the car for you and press the accelerator pedal, okay? Now as I change this throttle, we should see a change on the multimeter. So here we go. You see how it changes in value? So that tells us that the sensor is working perfectly fine. Now if you do this hookup and you do not see a reading whatsoever, or maybe sometimes when these sensors go bad, it may be an incredibly high reading, the sensor is bad, but typically you just won't see a reading here whatsoever. But let's say you're not too sure which prongs to touch. Now watch if I just remove the middle one. And as you can see from this from this picture, I'm just touching the top and the bottom leads, okay? We still have a reading. But if I blip the throttle, there's no change, okay? There's zero change. So this is what you need to find on your vehicle. Test the different prongs, see if you see a reading, and see if there's a change in that value. And that's how you can quickly test the sensor itself and see precisely if it's working or not. Now let's say you have a reading from the sensor, but for some reason you still have a trouble code. What else could be the problem? Well, most likely it's a wiring problem. So the last thing you can do is just verify that the harness connector, so this is the connector that plugs into the sensor, verify that power is getting here. And to make this very, very easy, I just took a paper clip and cut it in half, okay? Just cut it in half. And I want to verify that this is getting around 5 volts worth of power. So I'm just placing very gently the paper clip into the harness connector. Now I'll start off by testing the prong all the way to the left and all the way to the right. Again, just like the sensor itself, process of elimination. I know for this vehicle it's these two prongs, but I'll show you by process of elimination. So again, we need the multimeter. Now on the multimeter, you want the volts DC setting, okay? Make sure it's set at volts DC. AC is household current, so you don't want AC. Okay, again, let me grab the two wires. Not necessary, but makes the job easier. Place it on one end. There we go. To the red lead. The other one will go to the black lead. And then I'm going to turn the ignition key on. I'm not starting the car. And let's see if we see five volts worth of power. And there you go. We have 4.95 volts worth of power. Now watch, if I just remove one prong, okay, let's say I remove this one and I place it in the middle, there's no value. This is a millivolt, let me just place it in here. That's a millivolt reading, so it's 18 millivolts. That's way too low. You wanna see a volts reading, something like this, okay? Now, if you do this test, let me just turn off the ignition switch. Now, if you're not getting power at the harness connector, first make sure that the wiring right at the rear of the harness connector is in good shape. Sometimes, you know, guys working on your car, they'll pull from the wiring instead of the body, and that will dislodge the, the prongs inside the harness connector. So just make sure that's getting power. What I would do if I don't see a reading here is I would just insert the probes at the rear and see if it's getting power. And if it is not, then you probably have a problem with the vehicle's computer. It's very rare, let's put it that way. Chances are if you have a trouble code, it's this guy right here. Now, because this is a modern vehicle, you cannot just replace the sensor. You have to replace the entire throttle body. Now, replacing the throttle body is quite simple. And what I'll show you is also on another vehicle what it looks like when you remove it from the engine or the intake manifold. Essentially, it's just like this hookup. You have four fasteners holding on the throttle body to the intake manifold. You just disconnect. This is the map sensor. You just disconnect this. Disconnect, of course, the throttle position sensor. Remove this hose by this clamp. No big deal. You may have a coolant line, which you just peel off. 
And then right here, if you do have a throttle cable, just move it forward, and then you can remove the cable from its mount. And that's it, this comes right off. Make sure the new uh, throttle body has a gasket, and that's all it takes. That's really all it takes to replace one of these. You may have to do an idle reset, and something that Scotty Kilmer really gave a great tip on some time ago is if you just start your vehicle, turn on the air conditioner, and just let it run for a few minutes, a lot of times the vehicle uh, will learn the idle reset on its own. And it's, it's really a good tip because it does work for many, many vehicles. So that's all it takes to test. And if you have to replace the throttle position sensor, really not a hard job at all. You can complete this at home, certainly. And I hope this helps a number of you save some money, keep your car going. And uh, until next time, thank you for watching.